Okay, that seems to have worked. Okay, awesome. Oh so, yeah, we're just starting this off with a conversation. I'm V. I'm and Tina. This is, yeah. So, um, yeah, we are just here um, doing like a post Saturn Pluto conjunction <laughs> extravaganza because this is like a pretty monumental time and we're going to talk about our experiences. Um, I guess. I guess we should do the background on both of us, just like a little blurb, right? Okay, sure. Yeah, so uh, my name's V. I identify as a sapphic woman, so I'm a lesbian woman, identifying as a woman. Um, we're both in Portland. You want to give you a little, that's like my little designator. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Uh, I'm Tina. I newly relocated to Portland and spent a lot of time in Texas before that and doing lots of international travel. And I identify as non-binary because we're all spirits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rad. Yeah. I mean, I guess like just bouncing off of that, like I think um, I think we both kind of felt like there was a missing piece of the Ascension group that really speaks to, you know, gender nonconformists. <laughs> so we decided to, to start our own little channel. So here we are. And uh, I'm guessing by the time we upload this, we'll have a name <laughs> picked out. <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess I was going to say, like, we both work together. And on Thursday night, I ended up getting just like, I was in the office, I got chills. Mm -hmm. I was telling Tina about it. And then I was like rolling around in like a heat in the evening. And I was just like sick when I woke up on Thursday. And I've been knocked out, dizzy, flu-like symptoms, yes. But like since Thursday through now, still I'm a little bit dizzy. And going through all these like crazy thoughts just taking over my mind and having to lay down and feeling like lights or beams of light are coming through my head. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so I guess what we're doing here is connecting with everyone and trying to figure out, you know, how their experience went. Uh, how was your experience of this so far, Tina? Oh, interesting. Like Thursday, um, I have to like roll back to that day. It feels like a lot's happened since then. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of time has passed. It's only been like three or four days. So I'm like, has it been three days? Okay. Anyway, like it's really mm -hmm. been that kind of um, interesting at time experiencing like, ex yeah, my experience of time seems like elongated or something. Like there's like more time that passed or something, which I found interesting. Um, let me think like, I can't even remember what happened Thursday, honestly, <laughs> like, like a blur. Um, and then Friday, I remember I had a road trip plan. And so that was nice. And I got to be out in a little bit of nature, which is really one of my big ways of centering when I'm going through, like when I feel, when things feel really frantic, I like to just like, you know, really dig in and like just hold on tight to to mother nature in some way if it's like a tree or like even crystal stones or like having running water and just like hearing that going on is something because those are all things that like are soothing to me when times get a little bit frantic so yeah friday night was a little bit interesting i did a lot of crafting and then it was, a, it was a lunar eclipse party, right? Yes. Yeah. So it was, we had a full moon, uh, lunar eclipse, just a lot of the, it just, it felt very thin. Like there was just a lot of energy that was available, a lot of release kind of thing. Like that felt like a great time to release a lot of things. Um, I gathered with community around a fire. Um, there were so many prayers said and medicine songs offered and that was really special. So yeah. That felt good. Yeah. Um, Saturday was a little bit interesting because it felt like I had this immediate call to be home and to be and to go within. And so I just answered that call, even if it meant a long drive back home. <laughs> I did it. And because uh, yeah, that was like hours south, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. A couple, that was like a four hour drive. So it was like literally just like roll back in 
and really literally be the be the temple i have this concept of like the goddess temple this is where i live um both inwardly and outwardly so it was literally just like come back home come back to the goddess temple come back to yourself come back within and so yeah as i as that happened i like got home unpacked got ready and then the tiredness the i don't know it's like gravity just grabbed a hold of me and i was like down like naps i just basically slept all the way through all the way through sunday pretty much like the whole time like just i would and i kept going in and out of dream space that entire time so it was like oh Whoa. shit you got you got to see my fridge <laughs> <laughs> so i'm You're not, not really setting off so many things i would respond to about this <laughs> so like as i you're you're are you you have more to say oh no that's pretty much it yeah just and so okay. <laughs> cobbled it together and went into work on monday like i i I was able to like center enough to figure out that like yes monday's coming soon and you got to get ready yeah <laughs> and that yeah. required effort <laughs> yeah i was gonna say like a couple of things from this for one tina's experience versus my experience y'all typology freaks out there she is an ENFP and I am an INFJ. So she went out to absorb all this love in the world. I came in and I shut all my windows. <laughs> but like the feeling you said about feeling closed in, I felt like almost like we were getting sucked into a black hole. Mm. And I felt just like all these things beaming through my head, you know? And like, I had almost forgotten to mention my dreams. I okay I had just and I have I have prophetic dreams but like this is the first time I'm having dreams the first one was on I think Thursday or Friday night I think it was Thursday night where my friend and I were practicing projecting our light bodies okay mm -hmm. which was awesome because I haven't done any like metaphysical stuff in my dreams before and then uh I think it was it wasn't last night, it was Saturday night, I think. I actually had a dream where I was dimensionally trapped, tra like I was jumping into another dimension with my mom, coincidentally, who's a very empathic woman. But I was just like, mm. the dream world is just like crazy right now, mm. for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and that's yeah. interesting, your mom like joined you in that, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to like catch up with her on that and see. Um, oh, the the idea I had for like starting us off on the talk was so like I guess we can kind of walk through our own backgrounds. And I was gonna say one side note before I forget. Um, I don't know if this is of interest to you, Tina, but like I think it might be fun because like to be perfectly candid, over like the last year probably. I've been having some really, some really like interesting thoughts about, you know, gender and what it means to be who I am and if I identify as a woman or, you know, like, so if that's like something of interest to anybody who's watching this video, definitely drop a note in the comments because I think that might be a fun topic. I'm sure we'll probably just do it anyway, but like, Mm -hmm. I don't know I want to be I want to like make a space for people because like I feel like going through my spiritual journey which is like been over the last since 2016 June 2016 I've been looking for all this information to help guide me like I'm going through or I went through like a twin flame thing and it just felt like there wasn't anything that spoke to me and like mm. yeah it's like I understand, you know, like people mm -hmm. use the easy way out to, you know, say man and woman and feminine and masculine and all this stuff. But like, I don't know that <laughs> they understand what it's like to get that from a perspective of someone that's not coming from that place. Cause it's like, you feel completely isolated and then you're trying to find guidance in a spiritual community and you don't have that. So mm -hmm. like, well, can you relate? This is an amazing point. Yes. I think we like spoke to this, like, I love reading these, you know, ancient tomes and like esoteric knowledge, right? And it's like, uh, they're, it's 
I, I love like exploring, right? And like just diving into the possibilities of like, okay, well, this person said this and this person said that. That's really awesome. So much of that is written with he, <laughs> him, <laughs> like definitive, not even he or she, just him and he, and that's it. It's just like cemented in that voice and from that perspective. And I literally have to throw out every other word or every other pronoun and like try and replace it or sub a pronoun that like fits like for my, like who I identify with and like what speaks to me. And it's, it's almost like a little switch in my brain that like has to like rewrite the thing and like reprocess it so that my, it could actually sink in. Cause otherwise my programming, like the way I am, like I just outright reject it. Cause I'm like, this is like, definitely a version of the truth but it's not like all encompassing and so the way that it's presented it just has like male ego all over it you know what i mean as in like this is yeah. the truth this is it worship it be word Woo. and i'm like yeah but you're leaving out a whole other perspective and spirit knows no gender so what is this thing <laughs> yeah and i think like i mean and to argue for like I feel like, I mean, like, there have been texts destroyed that were, like, I mean, if you just think of, like, Sappho, for example, like, there's mm -hmm. all this, who's to say that that wasn't even out there, that it was maybe destroyed, you know what I mean? So it's, like, I, I, I take it as a personal mission that I really want to, like, I really want to give power back and, like, help guide people that are having a similar experience, because, like, yeah, anyway, <laughs> that's my spiel. <laughs> so, like, I think one thing would be cool to hear from you is, like, you were talking about your path and how you got to where you are right now. Oh, yeah, the, the twisty, what is it, the windy road of, of I don't know, revelry and... <laughs> Ascension? <laughs> I don't know. Because we're enlightened beings already. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, just relentless curiosity, relentless. Um, and I have my Mercury mind to thank for that. Thanks, Mercury. Um, <laughs> literally just um, always inquisitive, always have been raised in like the Catholic church, you know, the place where you don't ask questions. And then went to like private school where you, again, don't ask questions, just take it on faith or you go to hell or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> And growing up in the uh, <laughs> family in the that. South. again, don't ask questions. We're family. Whatever, eat what's on your plate. Like, you, anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, growing up in again the South, very closed-minded, very like, why question? America is the greatest place on the three galaxies. Who knows? We don't believe in other galaxies. America is the greatest. Why would you ever go anywhere else? And and me like having this tiny little voice inside that's like. But, um, huh? I'm looking through National Geographic. I'm like, there's all these awesome places. Like, I'm looking at the Atlas and I'm like, there's Tahiti on this map. I want to go there. <laughs> and just. Would you go to Tahiti? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Exactly. Um, that's kind of the point. It's like, ever, you know, college, fine. Like, I was like, all right, fine. I'll go to school. I'll check off all the boxes. Let's go to college. Let's do the thing. Let's get the job, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now can I do what I want? Okay, great. Let's do that now. <laughs> so, so it was a fun, like I took off and went traveling and went to go see the world and meet cool people that I couldn't meet in Texas and met some like really awesome people really broke out of my box, tried new crazy stuff. If I hadn't heard of it, I wanted to try it. Like, <laughs> And that wow. led me to all these awesome hippies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that, that opened, um, you know, I meditated for the first time. I like discovered like sound healing and gong meditation and like, um, you know, natural, what is it? Like uh, organic products, like natural products for the first time. Like the idea of like using a deodorant that didn't have weird chemicals in it. Like the idea of like, you know, what is, what's in your toothpaste? Like I started asking these weird questions. I discovered Dr. Bronner's and like 30 in one soaps that clean everything. Like I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. 
I discovered like all these medicinal plants that are like just growing, you know, just doing what they do. Plants grow and they're there and you can just pick them off the tree and, or like, you know, grab a root and like boil it for like half an hour or something, I don't know, and have this magical medicine. So that just like broke open these doors and suddenly I saw myself in all these possibilities and I saw everyone just like going through rush hour and like the job and I wasn't working at the time. I was just kind of deciding what was next. And I'm like, where are all these people going? Why are they rushing? Like, what is happening? Like, what's the point of life? Why are they doing all this? Like, do I need to do that? Like, is that really what I want? And that question led to a lot of more questions. <laughs> yeah. And somehow astrology came in, somehow numerology came in, again, like plant medicine, wellness, and eating for whole, like holistic, the whole total body that brought in meditation because you have to feed your soul as well as your body. Um, that brought, yeah. So then all of a sudden, all these things started connecting together and I find myself here. <laughs> That's awesome. Still asking a bunch of questions. <laughs> yes, and I I agree. That's I affirm that yes, Tina has lots of questions to ask. It's part of her <laughs> awesome nature. It's very inquisitive and curious. <laughs> As is my cat. If you guys are hearing those noises and me like batting away, I am batting away my cat. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess like when I met when I met Tina, I didn't realize she too was raised in the <laughs> in the Catholic Church. <laughs> and I'm actually from New Orleans so I think like it's almost like it's kind of funny because like our boss also you know not to bring that into it but like <laughs> we're all attracted to, you know that energy just attracts you know like it's hard it's hard to say that it's a coincidence when like you know each other's energy so well and people just come to each other you know what I mean like <laughs> but anyway so like I can relate to that background I will say when I was 10 years old with my, with my best friend cousin, we used to hide in her like fallout shelter or like storm area. And we used to practice witchcraft <laughs> so, <laughs> and smoke cigarettes. So uh, from, a, from a young age, I was a bad apple. <laughs> I always felt like, I was just like, and this sounds terrible, but I would be laughing at church because there was something about it that seemed, it's not for me. And I, I'm not knocking it for other people, but like for me, it always seemed like kind of like a play and like mm. the like the allure of like spirituality in a different way, like in a non-organized way was always there for me as a kid. And so you know, as I said, I grew, I'm, uh, I'm lesbian. My family was not into that. So I, I never, I didn't tell them until I broke up with my first girlfriend, but like with all of those, I had a lot of issues as far as like, um, feeling isolated and feeling like I didn't belong and that I didn't deserve to live. So like when I was 17, I went through like a pretty dark period, like a, I guess that would be my first dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. And I ended up actually staying up for three days straight and just channeling messages. Like, uh, I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, I'll save that for later. But like, <laughs> I was saying things that I could not know to my father from his mother. I was playing the piano in a way that I've never been able to play since because my mom's real dad was a classical piano or a jazz and classically trained pianist. So uh it was a crazy experience and like um it kind of got turned off until i too got into uh, like organic and whole foods i kept on getting signs that i needed to move to portland and when i moved up here i had a falling out with my one of my best friends and that started this huge second awakening process for me um 33 years old well, not at the time. It was it was June 2016. So I literally lost pretty much everything I could lose. I lost my friend and I lost all the people that I had in Portland because they were all connected to him. Um, I lost my job. Uh, I lost <laughs> I lost my cat to cancer and I lost mm -hmm. the girl that I consider my twin flame as, you know. <laughs> so anyway, it was a... Um, 
it was an awakening process. I don't even know where to go from there. That's just the beginning of the story. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, we've got a lot of video here. I think we could stop it pretty soon. I don't know if we want to, like, wrap up. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, wow. I love the share. And it's, like, uh, I, I think that's, like, resonates with a lot of 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 us, like, us including whoever wants to be included in that, really. But, like, oh, yeah just, you know, like the, this feeling of like feeling like every, you know, everything that you built has been stripped away and it's yes. so you can rebuild and the foundation is still there, even though it seems like the rug's just been pulled out. And so it's like all the good bits are still there. <laughs> yeah. That's a great way to, that's a great way to describe it. I think like, yeah, if I can, yeah, if to build on that, I do feel that like this, this weekend, I can't believe it's like, we're talking like this is years process, but it feels like it was four years ago. <laughs> four days ago was the longest time of my life. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think like, and everybody, please feel free to share your experiences with this, this conjunction, but, and you know, it's longer than just this apex, but um, it feels like all these parts are getting torn away, but there are these masks that we have on. And it's like, it's so painful. And, and you start to get into these fear um, feelings, like you're losing everything. Mm -hmm. And it's at the, end of the, at the end of it, you've survived it. You're looking around, you're still there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're a stronger version of who you are. You know better who you are. You might not know everything, but it's like, <laughs> this is a terrible analogy, but like, it's like, and I don't drink anymore. It's <laughs> like when you had like a bender and you're just barfing your guts up after a really long night, but there's this sense of clearing all this toxicity from your body. And, it, and this process is not pleasant, but it is awakening something in you. Mm, I'm actually going to take that into um, those of you that have uh, worked with medicine and there is this feeling where it comes back out like you're purging it and it yeah. feels you feel terrible in that moment <laughs> um in that there's this moment afterwards though where everything is calm and there's this peace and it seems like the deliverance right like the moment of clarity and so that's that is it that's why people come and and sit with with medicines um it's not necessarily for the the part <laughs> <laughs> the the part yeah the sick part that's that is like not so popular um but it's that moment afterwards where you really are feel like in tune and in alignment and so with that we always are in alignment um, and it's up to us to like do that work. So we recognize that. So. I think that's a perfect way to wrap it up. Yeah. All right. Well, thank Hell you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We're excited to have you guys. We hope you stay tuned. All right. <laughs> Until next time. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>